everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, it's Topaz Sharpen AI. This one's called Tips. I just have a few tips to share with you when you're working with uh, Sharpen AI. I think it's going to be a good, valuable uh, help for you today. So without any further ado, let's get started. I'm starting out in Photoshop. Now, I have this image of a butterfly zoomed into 300% sitting on a flower. It's very soft and out of focus. There's a lot of noise in it. I'm going to use Sharpen AI to tackle all those problems and show you some tips along the way. Here's my first tip for you. For images having an ISO of 1000 or lower and have focus issues, use Sharpen AI only. That's all you need. You don't need any other noise reduction software because the noise reduction inside of uh, Sharpen AI is is fine. For images having an ISO over a thousand and have focus issues, use Sharpen AI and Denoise AI or any denoising software that you might have, like for instance inside of Lightroom. This image uh, definitely meets that criteria because it is ISO 500. It definitely has a uh, focus problem because if I zoom in here on this butterfly, you can see this flower is really out of focus down here. The butterfly uh, body is real real out of focus this focus right here on the wing isn't too bad but we can really fix that with uh, sharpen ai so we're going to go ahead and launch it now what i've done with this image i went ahead and duplicated my background layer and renamed it sharpen ai so now we'll come up here to filter and find uh topaz sharpen ai give it a click and we'll get started Here's my second tip for you, and this is after you're inside of Topaz Sharpen AI, which will be there in a sec. But here's my tip. Start out with comparison view. That's where you see the four different images, and I'll show that to you. Secondly, turn on auto update and auto settings. Make sure those are turned on. And thirdly, examine the four different views and take a mental note of the best result. In other words, whichever one of those views looks the best, that's the one you want to take a mental note of. Now, here we are inside of Topaz Sharpen AI. And the first uh, tip is to start out in this comparison view here. And if you don't have it, all you need to do is come up to view this little drop down menu. Give this a click and make sure you have comparison view checked on. And secondly, we'll be going later to side by side view. So we're working with these two views, but we're starting out with comparison view. And remember, the next tip is to make sure you have the auto update checked on. That's the auto update preview. I don't think I said preview in the tip, but that's what I meant. The auto update preview. Make sure this little uh, toggle is checked on. And then under settings, make sure this is set to auto as well. The next step I'm about to show you is very important. And this is not in the notes. But what you want to do is come to the very first uh, mode, sharpen, click it, and make sure it is set to auto. Because sometimes when you go on these, they're not set to auto. You want to make sure it's set to auto. We know stabilize was set to auto. Now let's go to focus and see it's not set to auto. So I need to go and check that to auto. So make sure those are all in the auto settings. Because you want to start out and examine your image in the auto settings. And now the ne next step is to take note. Look at your four different images. Now the one on the top left is the original. The one on the right is the sharpen mode. The one on the bottom left is the stabilize mode, and the one on the uh, bottom right is the focus mode. So when we look at all of these different uh, windows here, we can clearly see that the focus looks the best. So we know this had a focus issue. So take a mental note of that. We're going to be using focus. And here's my third and final tip. Select the side-by-side -side view. You'll get larger previews when you do that. Choose the mode that looked best in the comparison view. Then turn on the auto update preview and auto settings. Examine that result. Then I want you to max out the sharpen slider and examine the result. Don't be afraid to do that. And then adjust the sharpness slider for your desired result. In other words, look at that max result. And a lot of times that's going to look good and you can use that. Don't be afraid to use it on max because you're not going to usually get really weird anomalies and things like that. It's usually going to work out pretty good. And you'll see that here following. And then lastly, uh, tweak the noise suppression slider if needed. And I generally don't have to mess with it. Usually on the auto setting, it does a pretty, pretty good job. And now following the third tip, come up here to view and make sure you change the view to the side-by-side -side view. Now, I really like the side-by-side -side view because you get a much bigger preview. So on the left, you see the original. And on the right, you see the preview. 
of the focus adjustment that we're going to be making. And remember, the next step would be to make sure you uh, choose the mode that you took the mental note on when you had the uh, comparison view up and we thought the focus looked the best. So make sure focus is set. And right now it is set. And then make sure your settings are set to auto. Okay, and now I'll just examine the image. Now you can take this, see my little hand tool? I can move this around to different parts of the image here. And what I want to do is move it so I can see, because remember I told you the body was out of focus, and you can clearly see that as soon as this uh, generates its preview on the left. See how out of focus that is, and how out of focus the flower is, but look how sharp it is here. Now remember, I'm in the auto view, but the body here looks good, and the wings looking really good, so I like that. And the last part of tip three is to take this sharpness slider and move it the whole way to the right. In other words, max it out and give it a second here to render. And it renders pretty quick. There it is. Now take note, did it look better than what it did when it was in the auto position? Let's go back to auto. And you know, it is definitely sharper. So let me go back to uh, full sharpness here. And I do believe it definitely looks sharper. So I'm going to settle on that. You can really max out the sliders. You're not going to get these really weird anomalies. I mean, you got to be careful when you got to examine your image to make sure you're not getting any weird uh, artifacts and things like that. But in this case, I think it really helps it. And what I might do is just back it off just for the heck of it, just a little wee bit down to say like a 90. We'll let it render out here and see what it looks like here. But I think I'm really happy with this result. And when you're finally done and totally happy, all you need to do is click apply it'll render it out and send it back into Photoshop. Now it takes a little bit of time according to your computer. Uh, you know, the mileage will vary for all different computers. And here we are back in Photoshop. And I just want to let you know, if you think mine rendered out really super fast, I did cut the video because I didn't want to, you know, bore you because it took probably about 30 seconds to come in here. All right, so I don't want you to be misled or bored. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. Let's do a little bit of uh, pixel peeping. First off, let's do a before and after. I'm just going to shut the eyeball off on uh, sharpen on the Sharpen AI layer. There's the before and there's the after. Now let me go ahead and zoom in so you can really take a look here. Okay, so notice the flower here. Here is the before. Check the flower out. And here's the after. But isn't that amazing results? <laughs> Look how sharp the flower is, the body of the butterfly and the wings over here. But check it out again. Here's the before and here's the after. And I'm zoomed into about 162%. Let me zoom in a little bit deeper here. There's 200%. So again, here's the before and here's the after. Let's even go into 300%. Here is the before. Notice how out of focus it really is. And then look at all that noise that is up in the image. Beautiful results. Well, there it is. That was Topaz Sharpen AI. Those were some tips that I think will really help you out. I love that comparison uh, view mode. And then I love the side-by-side -side view because you get bigger pre previews and you can really zoom in. So I like to use that comparison just to get me to the mode I want to use. And then I like to use the side-by-side uh, -side to really get in close and examine the image. Now, there is auto modes in there as well. And sometimes, and generally they, they work really well, but sometimes they let me down. So that's why I like to start out in the comparison view and really examine all the modes and see which one is the best. Hey, please leave comments and questions in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, and also please like and share my video. This really helps me to grow my channel, and I really appreciate that when you help me out like that. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing!